Hey everybody, I'm JJ. You're watching Reality Survival. So today we're going to talk about self-defense. Um, there are five basic elements to a self-defense shooting. Um, I think it's important for people who decide that they want to carry a firearm to defend themselves or their family. Uh, whether that be concealed or open carry, it doesn't make any difference. Um, if you're going to if you're going to carry a firearm, you really should know the basic legal. Um, Kind of elements for a self-defense shooting. Now, I'm not an attorney. Uh, I'm not giving you legal advice or anything like that. I'm trying to spur thought so that you will go do some more research in your state because every state could be a little bit different. The best thing to do would be really to consult with an attorney um, and get a really good education on it. It would be worth the money to sit and do that, I think. Uh, but anyhow, the, these these five things are are pretty universal in in many jurisdictions and so let's just talk about those real fast the first one is uh innocence and and that means that you cannot be the aggressor you cannot be the person who is uh starting this whole this whole thing You've got to be somebody who is innocent and who has had a you know physically violent situation uh, thrust upon you, and you're acting in response to that. So innocence is number one. Eminence is number two. That means that the threat the, the threat is happening now. It's something that is imminently happening. You have to respond to it immediately, or uh, you know there's going to be loss of life or whatever. Okay. So that means that you know if if the guy had already committed the crime and he's running away, it's no longer imminent, okay, for you to you know shoot them in the back as they're running away or something along those lines. That's that's going to be bad. Um, number three is proportionality, and that means that you can only use as much force as needed to stop the threat. So they kind of throw this into you know non-lethal should be met with non-lethal um and and or lethal against lethal um you know if a guy is um well just we'll just leave it at that i don't need to really provide any examples but essentially you want to make sure that your use of force is proportional to what the threat is being presented to you it's got it's got to have proportionality so the next one is avoidance um some states you might have to try to legally retreat it's called a duty to retreat some states have a duty to retreat other states have what's called stand your ground laws and you don't have to try to retreat you need to know which one applies for your state so that you make sure that you do it appropriately um, the next one is reasonableness everything in the situation has to appear reasonable to an average person or the guys who are sitting on the jury it's got to be reasonable. The actions that you take have to be reasonable. So to recap real quick, we've got innocence, imminence, proportionality, avoidance, and reasonableness. You got to think about those things. You got to, you got to know whether or not, you know, and how those apply for your situation. Um, so like in some of the, this some, these are some follow-up notes to talk about this here is, is, you know, if you lose your cool, um, in, in, a, in a fight or an argument or something like that, then you might become the aggressor unintentionally. Okay, let's say you're in a, you know, an argument with somebody or something like that, and, and it's possible that you could take it too far. Now, you can regain your innocence by withdrawing from that fight and walking away. And that's probably the best case scenario if you can do it, you know, in, in, in any situation. If you can just, just disengage, de-escalate, and not get into that confrontation, then that would be the best thing for all people involved. Um, so think about that. You can always you can always de-escalate if need be, especially when it comes to getting in an argument with somebody or something like that, and if it's getting cranked up. Um, I touched on this earlier. If an aggressor withdraws from a fight and um, you pursue, then you can then become the aggressor, and at that point, you can't claim self-defense. So you cannot be pursuing somebody um, and becoming the aggressor and then still claim self-defense in most situations, all right? So that's important to know. 
Uh, mutual combat, a bar fight, either person can claim self-defense in most states and this becomes a really sticky situation legally and you should really, really try to avoid those altogether. Um, you just don't want to, you just want to walk away because it's just going to be bad. Having a means of non-lethal force is a good idea so that you'll also be able to meet the proportionality aspect of it if possible. Um, you know, whether that be uh, an expandable baton if it's legal there or some sort of a pepper spray or OC spray or something like that. That's always, you know, it's, it's not, a bad, not a bad thought to be carrying those, especially if you're in a, a tense environment or someplace where there's been a lot of unrest, a lot of, you know, left versus right or whatever the case may be. Um, and you think that there could be a chance of getting in an altercation, have some sort of intermediate um, means of defense. That's, that's not a bad idea. Uh, let's see here. Last thing, a couple things here is uh, martial arts practitioners can sometimes claim that their hands are some sort of non-lethal thing, um, but you got to be aware that some techniques of martial arts can also qualify as grave bodily injury. And if grave bodily injury, um, you still have to think about the proportionality aspect that we talked about earlier because grave bodily injury can also be interpreted as deadly force. So be careful with that about how it's applied and what techniques you use and all those kinds of things. Um, the bottom line is, is that, you know, I think we all hope that we never ever have to use our weapon in defense of our lives or in defense of somebody else. Um, but sometimes situations are thrust upon us and we don't have any choice but to defend our family or defend ourselves or something along those lines and uh, that is why i recently got right to bear insurance um, right to bear is a company it's an insurance company a firearms uh, liability insurance policy company that uh, is a sister company to uh, palmetto state armory and they recently uh, started this company and I think that it is one of the best deals going out there. Um, I personally got their silver policy which I think is um, $500,000 in coverage and it was like 250 bucks, 240 bucks, something like that. Um, now the cool thing that I, what I liked about their policy is, is it covers the criminal aspect of it so uh, let's say that the police department charges you with a crime um, and you can use the insurance company will help you to pay for your defense costs as long as you're found not guilty <laughs> okay if you were found to be acting unlawfully or as a criminal then it's not going to pay out okay um, but as long as you're acting lawfully in self-defense of yourself or others whatever then the the, the policy uh, will will cover your you know expenses and, and that kind of thing civilly you can also be sued civilly um, in a, in a self-defense situation and they will cover those costs whether you win or lose the case it doesn't matter um, it can help you pay for the attorney's fees and it could also help pay for any damages or anything like that that, that are awarded one way or another. They've also got a couple of different uh, add-ons to your policy. You can uh, add coverage for your spouse. You can get coverage for uh, bond. You can also get coverage for wages. I think it's $200 a day for the wages while you're in court. And there was one more. I don't remember for sure what it is. I'm going to put a link down in the description below. Uh, it is an affiliate link. I joined up with them as an affiliate. Um, so if you decide to purchase a policy from them, then I'll get a uh, like a mark, small marketing fee or basically for uh, pointing you to them. Um, but take a look at it. Click the link in the description below. Go look and see what you think. You know, uh, for me, the the 250 bucks is not a ton of money to have um, a lot of peace of mind to know that I'm covered uh, in an off-duty situation you know and that's that I think is um, it's important to have because you know you just you just never know when something's gonna happen right you just don't know and so uh, having having that it, it's just no different prepping is basically insurance you know I mean prepping is essentially 
you know, food, food insurance, right? <laughs> in case there's no food on the grocery store, if you've got some supply, you know, stocked up in your house and you've got some basic food insurance. Um, we all carry insurance for uh, our cars and, and life insurance and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, firearms insurance is really um, kind of the same kind of thing. It just, it just makes a lot of sense. And the cost of these, these policies is, is really, really reasonable. So um, take a look at it and see what you think. Uh, maybe it's right for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe you've already gone with some other companies. I would just check and make sure that they have, you know, as good of coverages and all that kind of stuff, um, especially on the civil side. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, something to think about. So, I hope you found this useful. Um, take some time. Look into your state laws. Make sure that you know how you need to respond as somebody, you know, who's going to carry concealed or carry openly or whatever the case may be, but uh, be a responsible gun owner and know what you are supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. And, you know, it makes sense to, to make the choice to, to have some insurance coverage as well in today's society, which is so litigious out there. Um, so many people are so willing to sue for just about anything. Um, oh yeah, one other thing is if you happen to cause damage, um, say in a store or something like that, and the store sues you, the policy can also be used to cover that damage as well. Um, so I think it's a, it's a pretty good deal and uh, it just makes sense to me to, uh, to spend some money on it. So anyway guys, thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to live the six P's, proper prior preparation, prevents poor performance. Stay safe.